There's a war playing out in Canada. Protesters, arrests, and political anger. We have an unprecedented unified action. And it's over a pipeline. The Trans Mountain Pipeline carries large deposits of heavy crude from Alberta's oil sands to the coast of British Columbia. The oil sands are the third largest source of petroleum in the world, producing 2.7 million barrels of oil every day. Plans to dramatically expand the Trans Mountain Pipeline have led to demonstrations. A climate change battleground is emerging. On May 29, 2018, Liberal Prime Minister Justin Trudeau announced his government was going to buy the pipeline to ensure the expansion went ahead. The Trans Mountain Pipeline expansion is a vital strategic interest to Canada. It will be built. This triggered more outrage. And only this Prime Minister would call himself a climate change leader and then be willing to spend $15 billion on a diluted bitumen pipeline to China. Behind closed doors, Trudeau had faced pressure to force through the pipeline expansion from this man, Frank McKenna, one of the most powerful backroom players in the oil industry. In this interview he gave before Trudeau's announcement, McKenna admitted to lobbying the Prime Minister for the pipeline. I know that he's interested in this project. I've talked to him about it uh, as late as uh, during the last number of weeks. He cares about it. He, he's been working on it. And after Trudeau announced he had bought the pipeline, McKenna was delighted. And I do applaud very much the decision they made today. Frank McKenna kind of embodies that relationship between big oil and government in this country. It's very cozy, very close. You can move back and forth. Keith Stewart is an energy analyst with Greenpeace Canada in Toronto. He's basically got his finger in every pie and he helps sort of communicate across those different worlds. The purchase of the Trans Mountain Pipeline by Trudeau signaled something else. We've seen Prime Minister Trudeau completely abandon practically his, his climate leadership uh, in pushing for a major new pipeline that would drive um, long-term oil and gas expansion in Canada in service to a small number of, of private corporations who have an interest in this project. I would characterize the Trudeau government's position on climate change as essentially nonsensical and illogical. Although Trudeau signed the Paris Climate Accords, he's undermined promises to cut greenhouse gas emissions by pushing for the expansion of the oil sands and lobbying for pipelines that will hasten their development. We're certainly seeing in the regards to climate change, the uh, dark corporate side of the Liberal Party. McKenna embodies this dark side. So, so on the difference, somebody told me, between um, a banker and the Pope is that with the Pope you only have to kiss his ring. McKenna stands at the center of a web of banks, asset management, and refinery and tar sands companies, all involved in developing the oil sands. Frank McKenna clearly is highly sought after by business to help them get through the politics. McKenna is also a prominent figure in Liberal Party circles and for years was touted as Prime Minister material himself. I mean, everybody knows Frank McKenna. Um, you know, he's one of the most famous names in Canadian politics still. Warren Kinsella is a political consultant in Toronto with close ties to the federal Liberal Party. He's the Forrest Gump of Canadian politics and industry. He seems to show up at every deal being done, mergers and acquisitions. If you're looking for the guy who has the political juice to get you over the finish line, he often is the one who does that. Frank McKenna presents himself as a do-gooder. In public appearances, he's been seen doing charity work in Haiti with Matt Damon, hanging out with former prime ministers and U.S. presidents, and receiving honorary degrees. You know, it's funny, when you grow up in a farm, you live in nature and you just take it McKenna even portrays himself as a conservationist. As you grow up, you realize that not everybody in the country has access to the same resource. And so it emphasizes to you the importance of preserving special land and precious resources. What's left out is his role in this. The federal government has some significant public policy tools, like the federal... The Premier of Alberta, Rachel Notley, appointed him to a task force that's advising her on how to push the Trans Mountain Pipeline expansion through. So you can see that the corruption, um, the influence of the oil industry on, on government directly in that appointment. 
So the reason someone like a Premier Notley goes to someone like Frank McKenna is he's trusted by the people she's trying to help. He's trusted by the oil industry, he's trusted by the people who bankroll them, and he knows how Canadian politics works, and particularly he knows the federal Liberals. McKenna rose Thank to prominence in the corporate establishment. His political Frank abilities McKenna. were coveted. It's been a wonderful exposure. I think Frank McKenna was, was identified as a talented person who, who could be recruited to go on the corporate boards and that he would implement the policies. He proved he would implement the policies. McKenna comes from humble origins. He was born poor in rural New Brunswick on Canada's east coast, raised in the home of his grandparents in this tiny village of Appahawk. He came from, you know, a rough pig, son of a pig farmer to, to a guy who's hanging out with ex-presidents and current presidents of the United States. Michael Camp is a former journalist in New Brunswick who covered McKenna's rise to prominence. He's got kind of a boxer stance, you know, with his feet planted firmly on the floor. He's a presence. I mean, he comes in the room, you notice him. After receiving his law degree, McKenna became leader of New Brunswick's Liberal Party in the 1980s. I also believe that the kind of liberalism that was being espoused at that time um, did not work later on it, so to speak. McKenna, like his contemporaries Ronald Reagan and Margaret Thatcher, was a new kind of politician, a self-described liberal who supported austerity and other neoconservative notions. As we evolved, we came to a situation where we realized some of those programs, like unemployment insurance, made us more dependent rather than less dependent. He is a business liberal. He is a blue and in the view of some, a blue, blue liberal. You know, there's some liberals who will say privately that he's not liberal at all, that he's a conservative. In 1987, McKenna swept to power as the new premier of New Brunswick, winning an unprecedented victory. Frank McKenna wins every seat in the legislature. This is 58 to zero. New Brunswick is dominated by one of Canada's richest and most ruthless families, the Irvings. They control much of the economy of the East Coast including Irving Oil, which runs Canada's largest refinery. McKenna curried the Irvings' favor. He saw them as a plus rather than a minus. He didn't want a war with the Irvings. He didn't want to butt heads. New Brunswick is also Canada's poorest province. As premier, McKenna's main promise was job creation. One goal was to encourage call centers to come to New Brunswick. Jobs, jobs, jobs. That was the entire McKenna agenda. McKenna embraced controversial policies. He introduced a workfare program for welfare recipients and encouraged jail privatization. He also fought against an abortion clinic coming to the province. Frank McKenna brought neoliberalism to New Brunswick. And in some ways, he, he really did so before neoliberalism came elsewhere. After 10 years, McKenna stepped down as premier and returned to his law practice. He set out to become rich and got placed on the boards of many of Canada's largest companies and banks. It's actually not such a bad route into the boardroom as it turns out. You're dealing with all the captains of industry and they get to know you and they want favors from you and afterwards they reward you. One company he began to advise was the Carlyle Group, a Washington DC based global private equity firm with major assets in the US defense industry and close ties to the Bush family. So he gives them some uh, shine. McKenna was even invited to attend annual conferences of the exclusive Bilderberg Group. It's the place where the so-called captains of industry and commerce and politics get together to talk about issues. As a sign of his growing ties to America's political elites, McKenna became friends with the Clintons. Eventually, he even hosted an event in Toronto where Bill Clinton and George W. Bush came to talk. There's been um, a long history of cultivating that friendship as well with their, their network of, of uh, corporate influencers in Washington. In 2005, then-Canadian Prime Minister Paul Martin appointed McKenna the Canadian ambassador to the United States. And as a consequence of that, he knew everybody. And you know, if you're in a, to be an effective ambassador, um, in any context, you've got to get to know folks, but he was particularly good at it. But his leading role in encouraging oil sands development began the following year, when he was appointed deputy chair of the Toronto Dominion Bank, the second largest bank in Canada and eighth largest 
in the U.S. The TD Bank is one of the most involved in uh, the oil sands and in the fossil fuel sector uh, generally. The TD Bank emerged as the largest financier of the Trans Mountain Pipeline expansion, playing a key role in attracting financing for the project. The bank is also the second largest investor in Alberta's oil sands projects, investing almost $19 billion over the past three years. TD has direct ownership shares in uh, Canadian Natural Resources Limited, for example, in Synovus and Suncor. Those are three of the five largest oil sands uh, producers. Uh, they also have ownership stakes in oil sands pipeline companies such as TransCanada and Enbridge. Um, but uh, perhaps more importantly, TD is a major financer of uh, the fossil fuel sector through lending and underwriting activities. The TD is one of the biggest financiers of the Keystone XL pipeline connecting the oil sands to the Gulf of Mexico. Banks have collectively raised $5.8 billion to see the Keystone built. We see the leadership at TD Bank, uh, Frank McKenna being one of them, uh, frequently speaking up in public in support of the project and trying to rally uh, political and public uh, support for the project. McKenna also went on the board of Brookfield Asset Management, eventually becoming its chairman. Brookfield is one of the largest pools of independent capital in the country. Brookfield is a giant asset management company, the 10th largest corporation in Canada, controlling $285 billion in assets with 80,000 employees worldwide. Brookfield owns interests in pipeline companies. They're also heavily invested in the oil sands. They own and manage uh, a number of uh, natural gas and coal assets globally, for example. And we looked at 126 uh, uh, finance sector firms and found that more than a third of them had uh, board members in common with fossil fuel companies. And Brookfield was one of the more connected companies. McKenna is also on the board of Canadian Natural Resources Limited. Canadian Natural Resources is one of the largest oil sands companies in Canada, and it's actually been doubling down in the oil sands. So it has a direct stake as a company in all the discussion around export pipelines. Um, and at the moment, its business is constrained by the lack of um, a pipeline capacity in future if it wants to grow. But as a champion of the oil industry's interests, things have not always turned out well for McKenna. He went to bat for the Irving family when they tried to partner with TransCanada to build the Energy East pipeline from the oil sands to Canada's east coast. TransCanada pulled the plug on that project in 2017. And then there were his links to Bruce Carson, a former senior advisor to Prime Minister Stephen Harper. Bruce Carson was a uh, fixer for Stephen Harper. In 2009, Carson was made co-chair of an oil industry front group, the Energy Policy Institute of Canada, to lobby for the sector's interests, even though he was a convicted fraudster and disbarred lawyer. McKenna accepted a position as co-chair alongside him. Three years in, Carson was charged with influence peddling. Political consultant Warren Kinsella questions McKenna's judgment in associating with Carson. That, that wouldn't have been something that I would have done. McKenna's role in pushing the oil sands is even more troubling. Climate scientists call the oil sands one of the world's climate change hotspots. They've warned that the 2.5 trillion barrel oil deposit must remain in the ground for Canada and the world to meet its emission targets targets set to prevent permanent and catastrophic climate change. You know, whether you're TD, whether you're Brookfield, whether you're or any other major financiers, if you're banking on the oil sands, you're basically making a bet that the world is going to fail to act on climate change. Because the only way those projects make sense economically is if we fail when it comes to the Paris Climate Agreement. Since 2017, some major foreign banks have been pulling out of the oil sands. HSBC uh, was the most recent one, but we've seen AXA Group before we've seen ING Bank announcing publicly they're going to stop investing in these type of projects because they're no longer acceptable. But the companies McKenna helps direct, like TD Bank, are increasing their investments. They're pushing for them. They're very much isolated increasingly um, with the rest of their peers around the world on these projects. This is also true of Canada's political elites with whom McKenna has great influence. Frank McKenna did not respond to requests for an interview for this story. 
Well, I think what we've seen over the last few months, especially with the whole debate around the Kinder Morgan pipeline, is just how difficult it is for our political leaders to disentangle the public interest from uh, the private interests of the fossil fuel sector. In August, a Canadian court ruled that because the government had failed to consult with native groups about the Trans Mountain Pipeline, the construction of its expansion would have to be halted. Good afternoon. There's now tremendous political pressure on Prime Minister Trudeau to sidestep the court's decision and push the pipeline through. Talking about the stakes a little bit. It would not be surprising if Frank McKenna is one of those asking him to do this. They really show um, I think how difficult a task we have ahead in um, finding the political will to shift into a different direction economically, to stop doubling down on fossil fuels, to stop the ever expansion of uh, oil sands and natural gas production, uh, and uh, to start to make that shift over the coming decades into uh, a renewable driven economy.